That sparked a 10-day conflict with the Yugoslav National Army that ended with the Brioni Agreement brokered by the European community. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shortest wars in all of history. As soon as the digging started in 1964, the countdown to war was triggered. For this list, we're looking at historical wars and battles that were resolved in the least amount of time. Which of these fleeting clashes were you already familiar with? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Armino-Georgian War, 24 days After World War I, both Armenia and Georgia gained their liberation from the Russian Empire. In late May 1918, first Georgia and then Armenia and Azerbaijan declared themselves independent republics. The two newly independent neighboring nations soon fell into a dispute involving control of the Lori and Akhal Kalaki territories. At this point, Ottoman forces, which had occupied some of these regions during the war, had withdrawn, leaving them under the control of Georgia, even though they were Armenian-dominated. On December 7, 1918, this dispute became hostile, and Allied forces were called in to find a resolution. But the country was in crisis. There was a brief border war with Georgia and several disputed territories with Azerbaijan. They negotiated to turn the Lori district into a neutral zone, later dividing the area equally between the two nations. By December 31st, a ceasefire was declared, bringing an end to a 24-day war that saw both Georgia and Armenia suffer heavy losses. Number 9. The Norman Conquest – 16 Days On September 28, 1066, the Duke of Normandy, later and more famously known as William the Conqueror, landed in England with his troops, seeking to become king. Ships crammed with thousands of warriors and horses, and among them, Duke William of Normandy. A man who within weeks would lead that army into battle at Hastings and whose destiny it was to become King of England. Harold Godwinson, who ruled England at the time, had ascended to the throne following the passing of his childless brother-in-law, Edward the Confessor. After thwarting an attempted invasion by Norwegian King Harold Hardrada in the north, Godwinson marched part of his army to the south to fight the Normans. As soon as Harold heard the news, already battle-weary, he once again raised an army and sped south. This resulted in the historic Battle of Hastings on October 14th, when William handily defeated Godwinson and claimed the crown. The bio-tapestry illustrates him being shot in the eye or cut down, but no one knows if this is what really happened. The Normans had won. The last Anglo-Saxon King of England was dead. While there were multiple rebellions in the years that followed, the war was over that day in a little over two weeks. Number 8. The Serbo-Bulgarian War, 14 Days In September 1885, Bulgaria declared its unification with the Ottoman province of eastern Rumelia. This move was vehemently opposed by the neighboring Serbia, who feared that they would lose a lot of their influence in the Balkan region. With the support of Austria-Hungary, the king of Serbia, Milan I, declared war on Bulgaria on November 14th. While they were favorites to win, Serbian forces met stiff opposition from their opponents, who managed victories in vital battles and began occupying their land. Seeing the writing on the wall, Austria-Hungary demanded that Bulgaria stop its warfare, otherwise their army would intervene on Serbia's behalf. Hence, a ceasefire was signed on November 28th, with the unification of Bulgaria being internationally recognized. The Serbian army was defeated. The European powers intervened, and the status quo was maintained. Number 7. The Indo-Pakistani War, 13 Days Following the independence of Pakistan in 1947, tensions arose between the East and West territories that eventually devolved into the Bangladesh Liberation War. With conflict tearing the region apart, millions of Bengalis sought refuge in neighboring India. On December 3, 1971, Pakistan launched a surprise attack on 11 Indian airfields, reigniting the storied feud between the two countries. This time the focus wasn't in Kashmir, it was in East Pakistan. Here, India helped rebels fight for independence and dealt Pakistan a devastating defeat. However, it didn't take long for India to dominate Pakistan, as they were fully prepared for war and carried out coordinated air, land and sea attacks on their opponents. A group of three small missile boats of the Indian Navy carried out an audacious attack near the Karachi port, sinking four Pakistani ships. It was a turning point of the 1971 war. By December 16th, Pakistan formally surrendered to India after suffering losses of nearly 10,000 troops. 
This also brought to an end the Bangladesh Liberation War and their formal recognition as an independent country. This region became a new country, Bangladesh, and Pakistan lost its eastern half. Number six, the 10-day war, 10 days. On June 25, 1991, Slovenia announced its independence from Yugoslavia after a referendum passed with an overwhelming majority. Could Yugoslavia let its richest and most Western republic go without a fight? As they opposed this declaration, the Yugoslav government began advancing its army, also known as the JNA, towards Slovenia's border the very next day. The conflict officially began on the 27th, after the first shot was fired by a JNA officer, and it lasted for 10 days. On the 7th of July, both nations, alongside Croatia, signed the Brioni Accords, under the guidance of the European community, which brought the war to an end. European governments are staking much of their collective prestige on solving the crisis. Their main leverage is Yugoslavia's need to be a full economic partner in Europe. The Accords also mandated the withdrawal of the JNA from Slovenia and a cessation of independence activities in the country for three months. Number five, the War of the Stray Dog, 10 Days. Also known by the less dramatic name of the incident at Petrich, this battle kicked off on October 19, 1925, between Bulgaria and Greece after years of strained relations. There are varying accounts over what exactly led to this war, but in the most popular version, a Greek soldier crossed the border on October 18th to chase after his dog. He was then shot and killed by a Bulgarian sentry. Bulgaria apologized for the incident, but Greece demanded that they also punish the shooter and provide two million French francs as compensation. Once they refused, Greece sent troops into the country to force their hand. The League of Nations promptly stepped in and negotiated a resolution, terminating the war on October 29th. Number four, the Six-Day War, Six Days. After decades of border disputes between Israel and neighboring Arab countries, things escalated on June 5th when Israel launched an airstrike against Egypt. Israel's only hope is to strike first and to strike hard. Out of the blue on June 5th, that is precisely what they do. This attack nearly obliterated Egypt's air force and led to the deaths of 15 UN peacekeepers. A similar treatment followed in Syria, Jordan, and Iraq, followed by skirmishes with troops on the ground. Israel was left with advantages on the ground, allowing their troops to expand in multiple directions across the region overpowering their Arab foes and expanding Israeli territory. The UN stepped in and brokered a ceasefire deal, which was signed by all affected nations on June 11th. This battle wasn't a close contest at all. Israel had less than 1,000 fatalities, while the combined Arab countries suffered almost 20,000. Israel also made several land gains, such as the Gaza Strip, Sinai Peninsula, and the West Bank of the Jordan River. An absolutely central strategic point that allowed the Israelis all sorts of advantages in northern Israel. And then, of course, they'd also taken the West Bank, an area of great religious, strategic, and operational sensitivity. Number three, the Russo-Georgian War, five days. While it's often called the Five Day War, this conflict escalated over a longer period between Russia and its former protectorate, Georgia. The tension between the two countries had been palpable ever since Georgia declared independence in 1991, just prior to the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Their relationship became further strained following Vladimir Putin's election, reaching a breaking point in 2008 when NATO promised to add Georgia as a member. This is the last straw for Russia in terms of seeing NATO come eastward. I think they also are tired of the talk of Georgia joining NATO, right. which is the next intended step in the alliance. Russia backed independence movements in Georgian territories South Ossetia and Abkhazia and on August 1st, Russian-supported forces in South Ossetia attacked Georgian villages. In the end, there was little NATO appetite for war with Russia over Georgia. The breakaway regions of South Ossetia and Abkhazia were lost, along with villages like Tiny Abrevi over here. The Georgian army entered South Ossetia in response on August 7th. Falsely claiming that Georgia was committing genocide, Russia invaded Georgia until a ceasefire was negotiated by French President Nicolas Sarkozy on August 12th. Point five of the six-point agreement says that the Russia should withdraw its troops to the positions they held prior to the outbreak of hostilities, and that has never happened. Number two, the football war, 100 hours. 
on June 27, 1969, the El Salvador and Honduras soccer teams faced each other in a playoff qualifier for the 1970 FIFA World Cup. The game was ultimately won by El Salvador, causing already tense relations between the two nations to spiral out of control. Less than three weeks later, on the 14th of July, the Salvadoran Air Force attacked Honduras and invaded the country. Although they initially advanced rapidly, the Salvadorans soon met significant resistance from Honduran troops. The Organization of American States was then asked by Honduras to arrange a ceasefire, officially bringing the conflict to an end on July 18th. However, it wasn't until 1980 that El Salvador and Honduras signed a peace treaty resolving their long-standing border dispute. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Anglo-Zanzibar War, 38 minutes. On August 27, 1896, a war commenced and wrapped up in less time than a Stranger Things episode. The conflict involved Khalid bin Bargash, who had installed himself as Zanzibar's ruler after the sudden death of his uncle, the pro-British Sultan Hamid bin Thueni. Many even believed that Khalid had a hand in Hamid's demise. This didn't go down well with British authorities, as they wanted a different person in charge. They sent Khalid an ultimatum to evacuate the palace, but he surrounded it with soldiers instead. On the 27th, British warships rained down bullets on the palace, effectively winning the battle in 38 minutes. Only one Brit was injured in the process, while Zanzibar had around 500 casualties. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.